So welcome everyone. My name's Bill. Um, I am the founder of Pet Passion to Profit. And this is the presentation that I did to uh, everyone on the Savvy Day of Business. That was uh, last month, I believe, and it might still be available on their Facebook page to go and watch. Um, and I highly recommend you go and watch it because there was not just myself, but there was many people talking that day and uh, loads and loads of value for your for your business. Uh, I tried to get hold of the recording, but it's not quite worked out. So I thought I'd um, record this separately. Uh, if you go and watch it on their Facebook page, I think it's on the Savvy Support Facebook page, um, you can actually see the, the, the interaction that I had and the questions and answers and the comments that came in whilst I was doing my little talk. Um, so, you know, it's highly recommended that you go back and watch that. But if not, here it is. And this will be on uh, YouTube so you can uh, rewatch it as much as you want to. So who am I? My name's Bill Betts and um, I am the founder, as I said, of Pet Passion to Profit. And it's a business offering mentoring service and business training to pet groomers and pet groomers in training. Uh, I'm also the co-director of AIDS and Animal Care, which is a pet groomers based in Kent. So I run a Facebook group called pet grooming business help and support and you're more than welcome to come and join that group it's a very supportive group but for the time being I, I want to tell you a story and I want to tell you like a story about me and Emma so A to Z Animal Care was founded by my wife Emma Betts um, in 2005 Emma has been a Emma had been a veterinary nurse actually for some point for some time but was very frustrated with the lack of responsibility and the politics of the vets. I remember um, I met Emma when we were 17 doing our A-levels and she probably worked in the vets most of her sort of young life. She put, she got a job there as a, a Saturday girl and doing the cleaning and then they gave her more responsibility and she was actually uh, helping the, the vet, um, Mr. Clayton Jones, he was an orthopedic vet at the time. And she did a lot of help with him, with her operations. And, um, you know, even on her school holidays, the veterinary nurses at the place would take their holiday and then would go in on their school holidays and take over from them. And then, I don't know if you remember when we all did our work experience um, when we were at school, two weeks of work experience, Emma went and worked at the vet. So when we came out of school, Emma was determined to work at the vets and um, carry on with the vet nursing career. And she went through, uh, very lucky to put her through her vet nursing exams. But um, after qualifying as a vet nurse, nothing really changed. And the responsibility was no greater. And um, she just didn't really like um, the atmosphere of the vets and how the vet nurses were treated. So one day Emma said to me, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, she asked to go part time or she asked to do her um, grooming course whilst being employed, but the vet said no. So she enrolled in a, in a grooming course, took herself off to a local grooming training school and resigned from her day job. And um, she did a 30 day um, grooming course, no qualification, which was uh, probably quite scary, don't you think? So we, so this was 2005 and we only had yellow pages back then. Facebook was only just born and wasn't really a thing for businesses. And um, Facebook, like you know it now, is completely different to what it was then. So when we were thinking of a name for um, the dog groomers, yellow pages played a massive part in deciding it. You know, we wanted to be part, we wanted to be at the top of the pet section of the yellow pages. And that's how the business came to be. A to Z animal care so we could be at the top there was no internet advertising just the local papers to advertise in um, uh, but I'd never heard of a, a pet groomers myself and um, there are very few groomers around unlike today we are surrounded and I think at the last count I think I probably counted about 23 um, pet groomers around us in sort of about a 10 mile radius so Emma went out and uh, we started advertising. She got her equipment, got her um, notes from a grooming table, the book, and um, she took a job at a local stables and um, started doing mucking out. So we had a bit of income 
and she used to go to people's houses to groom their groom their dogs. So it, it was mobile, but not in the sort of mobile sense that you see these days, where you got a mobile van going around doing the grooming. We Emma was going into people's houses to do the to do the dog grooming. The business took off. You know, the phone calls were coming in. Emma was getting busy. There were a few incidents where. Perhaps we'd Emma would turn up at someone's house and the, the people weren't there, or you know, or maybe the cat had escaped or something like that. So by having to drive to people's houses and work in their houses, it was limiting um, the amount of business that we could do. It was limiting the amount of business that um, we could do, and it, it prevented us from scaling that business and doing more. So as the business took off. Uh, Emma took the brave decision of taking on a shop and quickly after that took on a member of staff and started to do apprenticeships. There was always a sense of um, not knowing if we were doing the right, or doing the correct or there was always a sense of not knowing if we were, what we were doing was correct or if the impact of our decisions had on our business. So. Decisions like pay rises for staff, taking on new staff, etc. is always um, there's always kind of a plan in the background, but we never really knew um, whether it was the right plan or or the impact of the decisions that we were making and how that was going to impact on our business long term, say throughout the year. And you know, as you probably appreciate if you're watching this, running a business can be a really lonely place. You don't get taught this sort of stuff at school. No one teaches you, and you could probably even do a business degree. Now I've spoken to people that have done business degrees, and they still don't understand the, the logistics and the reality of running um, a business day day in day out. So, um, unless you've got friends and family that do their own sort of business, business can be a very lonely place. But things settled down for us, and A to Z found it rhythm and uh, it got busier and busier and busier. And, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, as we grew, so did our turnover, obviously, um, and our staff, but not our profits. Turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. And this is why we're in business, isn't it? To make money. We sought some guidance and we did get some useful advice, but often um, it was advice like get your existing customers to come back more often and you won't have to do so many new ones. Um, these business advisors, they gave us reports and told us what we could do, but we never signed up with any of them. Could it be a waste of money? You know, these are the questions that we had in our heads. How can they help us? What do they know about grooming? What do they know about the business of grooming? So they never convinced us or they never followed up and they never really helped us and um, sign us up to their mentoring programs. There was never a time um, where things were running smoothly. It was like spinning plates, especially when it came to staff. Um, staff, we have some uh, amazing members of staff and we've also had some not so amazing members of staff. And it is like spinning plates. As soon as you get one plate spinning nicely, the next one will start to wobble. I tried myself to manage our website. I tried to write our, con our staff contracts and our handbooks, but being so busy, there was never actually got finished. I remember taking weeks and weeks and weeks writing this staff handbook, but um, it just, I still not, never, I never published it. I never actually had the confidence to know that what I was writing in that staff handbook was actually correct. So I never actually managed to finish, no, no matter how many weeks we got. So like I said, we had lots of plates spinning and however, um, fortunately, nothing crashed too much, but all very well overwhelming. And you have those days where you just think, why, why do I carry on? Why not get a normal job? I could learn more and I could earn more in a local supermarket and have less hassle. This is when the change happened. We finally found a mentorship program. We came across a program on the internet and it looked sort of like a really great fit. It really felt like they understood all of our problems and could provide the help and support that we were craving. And it was a craving. We knew that the business could do better. We knew that we could scale the business more. And although um, skeptical at first, we took the leap 
and signed up and we have never looked back. It has um, improved so much of our business and our personal lives as well. So what did it look like for us? Our new mentors were um, a critical friend that have business experience and they had business contacts. They love business and they had a they have a really positive can do attitude and imposed the motto get shit done on us get shit done someone who actually believed in our in us and our business they were our biggest fan and they wanted us to succeed we had to accept some hard truths we were getting things wrong within our business um, which was costing us time and money and we probably knew um, looking back we could probably see um, where we were wasting time and money. The, like I said, the staff handbook um, that I've been trying to write for, you for months and months was an issue. We were overstaffed and we were wasting time with jobs that we, we could outsource and we had to push our prices up. Now, that when we, I remember very well when talking to the mentors and they're like, your prices need to go up. You need to put your prices up. And um, this causes that really deep, sick feeling in, in the, the bottom of your, in the pit of your stomach. And um, it carries on through with poor sleep due to worry. And I, I really don't want to do this feeling. But with mentorship came accountability. And we set ourselves goals each month and we kept accountable. And if we struggled with those goals, we now had someone to ask and someone to push us. Someone who could look at our ideas positively and constructively and give us honest feedback about them. We've managed, and I sometimes wonder how, to keep the business running for many years. However, we now know our business will thrive. We are now driving our business instead of it driving us. And I've always sort of said business can be like this big beast that takes over your life. And if you don't get a hold of this beast, you can then... Um, it will drive you and it will drive you mad as well. But if once you get hold of it and you direct it where you want to go and you set goals for it and drive it to where you want to go towards your goals, you can do really well in business and help you help yourself and help your mindset. So we've controlled that beast that is business and it stopped it running away from us. We now have headspace, which allows us to come up with new ways to help our customers. We've coming up with new products that are not only profitable, but ensure our customers benefit from them. We have plans of expansion as we now have the confidence and the know-how on how to do it. We know how to take our new products to market, as in we know how to advertise them to customers. We know where how to build up that demand and how to build up that excitement and tension within the market. And we know how to build products and take them to market and sell them. Hand on heart, mentorship has changed our business and it has changed our lives. So I want to take that experience that we've received and bring it into the pet grooming world. The mentors that we have, um, they're, not pet, they're not part of the pet grooming industry. They are more general business mentors, but Emma and I know what the challenges are that pet groomers go through within the business. So I've listened to the people in my Facebook group tell me what they're worried about and struggle with. So that was our story and that's how um, mentorship has changed us and changed our business. So welcome back and I hope you've, um, you've, you've listened to our journey so far and I hope you can, can uh, resonate with it a little bit and I think it will um, remind you of maybe your own journey and um, but let me give you a little bit of help right here and right now as you've listened to our story. So what I'm going to tell you here is five ways to, that you can grow your business. So number one here is gain more good quality customers or clients. Now, if you've just um, if you've just sort of heard that and thought, oh. My books are full. I can't add any more um, people. Then you need to ask yourself, are you too cheap? And do you need to put your prices up? If you fill your books with um, cheap grooming, then you're going to earn the same amount of money year on year on year, and you're not going to grow or go anywhere or scale your business. 
and you're going to get fed up with it. You're going to be so busy because people all want to book in with you. You're going to be overwhelmed with the phone, overwhelmed with the bookings, and you're going to be on that sell cycle, sell, deliver, sell, deliver, sell, deliver cycle of death. You might take someone else on, but you won't make any more money because all you're doing is servicing that cheap custom. So put your prices up and start creating that fire break. And if people leave, if your books are full and people leave, then that's fine because that's creating space for the new people that are going to pay you a higher price to come and join your business. So number two, get your existing customers to come to you more often, set up a six to eight week schedule and encourage booking in advance. Sell the benefits of this. If your customers currently visit three times a year by adding only one additional visit, you've increased your revenue by 25%. And that's without taking on a single new customer or paying for any more advertising. Increase your prices. Cue the sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. This is easier than it sounds. And the thought of it is worse than doing it. If the fear is holding you back, just put your price up a little bit to the next customer, the next new customer that calls you to book in. Add £2.50, add a pound. Just add a little bit more to give you that confidence that people will book in and won't query it. Decrease your costs. It sounds obvious, but ask yourself how much your business spent last month, last week. Is it written down? You know, Understand the numbers. Do you know how much you can expect each employee to generate you? Do you understand how much it costs you to open your shop, your garage, your drive your mobile groomers to that grooming appointment? The devil for this is in the detail. You need to be all over your figures. If you can reduce your costs and increase your prices, that bit in the middle, that's your money, that's your profit. And then add new services that bring value to your business, but are also profitable. No shiny penny syndrome here, please. You know, if you're making 50 pounds an hour from dog grooming and you charge 10 pounds an hour for a dog walk, don't do dog walking, do more grooming. But if you can then charge a bit more for teeth cleaning and you add it to your grooming prices and then a groom becomes, I don't know, uh, 80 pounds for that one dog, that's a win, isn't it? It's probably going to take around similar amount of time, maybe an extra half an hour for the teeth cleaning, but you're making good money from it. So I don't, although retail is nice to have, it doesn't make much money and it's hard work. Doggy daycare, there's rules around that and how many people you need to have and restrictions on dogs. Dog walking, that takes you away from the grooming side of things. And if it's the grooming side of the business that's making you money, then concentrate on that and add profitable services to that as well. So what do I offer? I offer empowerment, a change of your mindset, a critical friend to help you, less stress, less worry, and I can help you implement what you've learned today plus more. And when I speak to groomers, I hear them say they're overwhelmed, they're confused, they need structure, they don't understand how they've got this far, they have no clue about business or, or accounts, and they need someone to hold their hand a bit. So my groomer mentorship program can take you on a journey to improve your business skills and your business. My business startup day will help you if you've just finished your pet grooming course and don't know where to start in business. Or maybe you work at a groomer's and have a desire to set up on your own. And this the help that you need is now. I also offer a one-to-one -one grooming, a one-to-one -one business mentorship as well to really delve deep into your problems and um, challenges and really help you move your business forward. So if you've got any questions, then please email me. The email address is there. Come and join the Dog Grooming Business Help and Support Group. There's my telephone number. 
direct message me on Facebook, friend request me on Facebook, and sign up to the YouTube channel. This is all this help that you need is now available. So please don't be a stranger, get in touch, and let's have a conversation. Thank you.